Hey guys. So <clears throat> I hope this headset is working better than the last one, but I hope you can let me know if you can hear me okay because my last ear pods were not what were not working and uh guy can you hear me okay <laughs> i need a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending <laughs> well i'm going to just keep going until people tell me they can't hear me <laughs> So it was an exciting week. We had a lot of things going on and I wrote a lot of notes on what I wanted to fill everybody in on. Lots of lots of big stuff. Okay, thank you Tasha. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> carry on, carry on. Thank you, guy. <laughs> love love your daughter. Love your daughter, by the way. <laughs> so anyway, this week I like my main topic tonight is actually why it's important to ride with short reins. And I know Charlotte says short medals win gold medals. And that is true. And I hope everybody on their way to the Olympics are going to have nice short reins. But how we get there is also having the ability to ride with long reins. And I'm going to go into that um, Later, and you know, I just had a couple of kind of special situations this week that prove that that is important to have that skill. But the week in review first, got my wine, dressage a Devon cup. Wait for it, we're gonna talk about that too. <laughs> but I first have to say happy birthday to Abby. Thank you so much for everything you do for our team, for my horses, for everybody who is here, for the academy. She now helps me with the academy. So Abby's the best and happy birthday to you. I hope the cookie cake is delicious. Um, huge congratulations to Catherine Respis, who came to visit us on Saturday at the clinic at Shannondale in Atlanta. And then... She had a baby that night. And like, can we just talk a second about that? Because she was in labor for like an hour and a half. She had her baby girl, Maisie, unassisted. Her husband was there to catch the baby. It's like a crazy miracle. I am, I, it's just like, I am so impressed. She is, I always knew she was like superwoman and amazing, but this like takes it to the whole nother level of like, who has their baby at home, like in their bathtub? Like, is that how this goes? <laughs> I don't know anything about babies. Horses, I know, I know a tiny bit about horses, but <laughs> babies, Catherine is my hero. So huge congratulations <laughs> to Catherine and we love you very much. Um, Speaking of Atlanta, yes, I did a clinic at Shannon Dell. Thank you so much, Julie Shannon, for hosting me and GDCTA. It was a beautiful place. Um, the whole area was wonderful. We ate at a wonderful restaurant on Saturday night. Big shout out to Megan and Noble who came to visit me from Alabama, and we had a great we had a great time visiting and catching up. So that was great. Uh, it was a wonderful group. It was just all kinds of different horses and all kinds of different level of riders and just a really fun group of people to work with. And there was a lot of improvements and um, it's always really fun to get a new group and, you know, kind of the, the challenges, like figuring out like what people know, what people don't know. Where are they at? How can I help them? Um, I have two days, you know, two 45-minute sessions. And how can I make the greatest impact? So um, it was a super receptive group, lots of auditors. Um, it was a little hot, but uh, hey, that's summer in the South. So uh, I happen to like the heat, so it works okay. But it was it was warm, but... Um, wonderful group of people and a uh, huge thank you to everyone who hosted it and, and brought me over there. 
Um, it's only three hours, so it's not that far away. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, we are making headway on Devon. Devon, dressage at Devon, best show, best show on earth. Um, we, the Team Tate Academy, is donating money, and so we have secured the tunnel. So the Team Tate Academy tunnel is between the CDI stabling and the ring. So we get to decorate that. But please, 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 we're looking for donations, um, small businesses. It's a great way to get yourself advertised in a, in a horse community. We're going to do a whole bunch of live streaming. It's going to be a brand new, like a brand new Devon. We've never done anything like this. And we're really excited to share the magic of Devon with everybody you know, with, with everyone who loves dressage and can't maybe make it to the horse show. Um, but the horse show will go on and uh, we can't wait to let everybody be a part of it. And we would love the support from everybody in any way you can. So yeah, what else? Um, on my way to Atlanta, I played the replays because the Team Tate Academy has an app for that. And so I was hearing Charles DeComfy teach through the speaker of my truck. <laughs> of course, I was not watching the video because I was driving. Um, but I remembered, you know, the rides and stuff. So it was just fun to, like, hear him talking and hear the concepts and hear the theory. So we had a three-day clinic with Charles, who's been my mentor for over 32 years, and I highly recommend. We had the most amazing live stream team. I mean, we got the different angles and close-ups and it was an amazing event to be at in person, but this was the first time I started to watch the replays and those are still available for purchase and I highly recommend watching Charles in his element, in all his glory. He is entertaining, he is funny, he is a riding master, he makes everything relatable, he's just the most incredible man on the planet. So I highly recommend everybody check that out um, as well. A uh, podcast coming out on Friday is going to be a good one. Uh, it's the title of Getting Overwhelmed with the Little Stuff. Um, how to not let the little setbacks derail your progress. So i um, really excited to hear that one again. I mean, I know I said it, <laughs> but sometimes I need to just take my own advice too. So it's good for me to like, you know, I, I know a lot of riding instructors who are like, God, I should just give myself my own lesson because I, I need to say that to someone needs to say that to me, you know, so we could like teach ourselves our own lesson. So, um, I know I said this podcast, but I'm I'm actually excited to listen to it again um, because there's always there's always setbacks, there's always challenges, there's always things that aren't working out quite how you thought, and you know it's about keeping your eye on the prize and uh, you know put one foot in front of the other and and, and keep keep striving forward. Um, but yeah, so to the main topic this week is again, I know Charlotte Dujardin is amazing. We all want to be like her. She is our, she is our hero, all of our hero. And she's a fantastic rider and she holds lots of world records and she's incredible. And she coined the phrase, short reigns wins gold medals. And I am not denying that that is true. And I will support you when you're going to the Olympics for you to shorten your reins and get your hands up in front of you as well. Because that is like the epitome and the top echelon of our careers and the levels. Not only are you riding the highest level possible, you're doing it amongst the best people in the whole entire planet. That's amazing. Shorten your reins. Yes, yes, yes. But it is also important to have the huge skill of being able to ride with long reins. So let's just talk about that for a minute. <laughs> First off, and you can learn a lot more about this with Jillian Kreinbrig, who's coming to our place. She's a functional anatomist. 
she actually came into the academy for a special um, one of our lectures for the apprentices and trainers. She came in and gave a fabulous lecture about how the horse's body functions when it goes on the bit and what about contact and are you like promoting light contact or are you holding and feeling restrictive to the horse? Because everything we do is really from the horse's perspective because horses know how to be horses and humans, we need to learn to become riders. And so it's so powerful um, even though we are very like eye hand coordinated and we, we see or feel things start to go wrong. The first thing we want to do is like shorten the reins and like, mm, like grab a hold of their face for this sense of control, which is like just an illusion that we have really any control <laughs> because if the horse wants to do something with you and I mean the grace of God and the grace of that horse if either one of those want you off, like, you know, most likely you're, you're going to be in the dirt. So it's important to create trust and connection and um, response to the aids, all those things. Um, and it's not this falsified control of having short reins. Not that being on the buckle is safe. I'm not saying that's safe to just like, woo, you know, chuck the reins at their face and they like you so they won't hurt you. It's like horses are wild little animals and their instinct sometimes takes over. And so we always must be careful and always be safe. But it's really important to not over control the horse with short reins. So let's get into that a little bit. And Megan is asking if Jillian's clinic is going to be live streamed and it is not. So y'all need to just come in person. So get over here <laughs> because anyone who's a trainer and that's of course everyone who sits in the saddle is a trainer teaching your horse either what you want them to learn or what you don't want them to learn. So it's important that we are all super educated and motivated to do it in the right way. And scientific proof of things can be really powerful of like, how does the horse's body function when it goes on the bit? Am I pulling? Am I holding too much? You know, all these things are so important to think about. So first off, we want to think about the horse's neck and how it's a bit of a teeter-totter. So when like the neck goes down, the back comes up. And so that's why it's really important for our younger horses to, uh, while we're building up the, the top line and we're building up the horse's ability in their postural muscles to carry us, it's important that we are able to put their necks down so that they can raise their back. You know, when we talk about uh, the horse's body, it's like on this ligamental pulley system. So like as the neck pulls out of the back, it raises, you know, the saddle, supraspinous ligament, nuchal ligament, all kinds of um, systems are in place that as the horse's neck comes down, the back goes up. And we need to teach the horse to be able to be in that posture so that it doesn't hurt them for us to ride them. And it's also important for their joints of their legs that they're using their torso properly so that they don't have to um, take the brunt. You know, when you watch a horse with a tight back, their joints are not allowed to be supple and buoyant. So then they got like, like stiff back, you know, and then like, da, 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 you know, then their legs, like you can hear it a lot of times in the rhythm uh, of their footfalls. When you hear how light or heavy the horse um, lands on the ground, that's a lot of information about how is he carrying himself and, and is he um, or she, you know, really impacting the ground in this like soft, supple way. Uh, again, it's important that we understand that we sit on the weakest part 
and we hold on to the most sensitive part. And it's really our job to make sure that we build this bridge so that the horse is able to carry the rider without pain. Uh, It's also important, you know, as the horse has this longitudinal flexion, because that's really important that the back is up, because then the horse can actually properly laterally bend as well. You know, we talk about the definition of bending being the raising and the stretching of that outside nuchal ligament and the kind of like a rotation through the rib cage. And if the belly is sagging down and the back is down and the neck is up with these short restrictive reins, that whole system is sort of thrown off its center. And we must teach the horse how to chew the reins out of the hand and always be seeking the bit. So another thing that is important about that is that it's the horse that makes the contact, not the rider. So yes, and when you first start out on a tense, young, hot horse, and they're kind of running and they're kind of fast, like, yeah, you can't just like, I have to stretch down. I heard in the clinic from JJ, I need to like, let go of my reins. Uh, Like, that's not that safe. So like, that's not a great idea. (laughs) We got to like build up to that. Um, So it's important to know that we must always be safe, obviously. But then there's also this idea that it's the horse that makes the contact. Charles always, always reminds us that it's the horse that makes the contact, not the rider. And then he says, And what does the horse contact the bit with? His hocks. (laughs) So I repeat that and I love Charles and honor Charles by repeating that to everyone because it's really hard not to choke up on the reins and hold the horse where they think they want to be with this high, tight neck. And it's so important for the development of the body that we put the neck down, we lengthen the reins and we let that horse find um, the body function of neck down, back up. And again, that also goes into another quote or Charlesism of we must always do what the horse needs and not what he wants. And it's usually the opposite. So the horse that is running with a high, tight neck running fast, already we know we need to slow it down and lengthen the neck because that's what he needs and not what he wants because that's the opposite. So another horse that's like really slow and lazy and like long in the neck, you better shorten those reins and get that thing, get that thing going, you know, because he needs to speed up and raises vibration and take you forward somewhere through the bit. You know, so I think it's really kind of fun to even think about like, you know, who is my horse and what would be the opposite of that and how close am I to that? Something Charles said in the clinic as well was it's our responsibility as the rider, the trainer, to expose the horse to their limits. And I just, I love that. And that's like the limits of stretch. That's the limits of collection. That's the limits of bend, of slowness, of length of stride. You know, it's like, you know, that daily vocabulary of the riding, of changing the frame, changing the stride length and bending the horse. But it's also like the limits of his body. It's an amazing feeling to take a horse that's so high and tight in the neck and teach it to completely let go. And I know Casey's watching and her daughter was just here, Meg, with her eventing horse. And it was like so amazing because, you know, he was like rolling a peanut on the floor of the arena today like fully stretched out. It was amazing. And 
as a tight thoroughbred, the big thing she wanted to work on was that he's very tight and choppy in his shoulders and doesn't have a lot of reach in his trot. And I was like, well, the first thing we need to do is lengthen his neck so that his shoulder blades and his scapulas can actually roll fully properly. And then we build up the length of the gait once the longitudinal flexion is there. And so that was a really fun thing to watch because that was like dramatic, like obvious, like wow. All of a sudden his shoulders started to swing and he opened up the back. Because if the neck is like so restricted with these short reins that are winning medals, like that all comes like way later, way later. And probably the last thing, if I was coaching you at the Olympics, the last thing I would probably say is shorten your damn reins. Like I get that. I am a huge fan of Charlotte. I think that's awesome. But on my five-year-old horse or my nine-year-old thoroughbred off the track or my ex-hunter, you know, that's been in a martingale or something that's been in draw reins from Europe. I mean, you've got to stretch down the neck. The horse must seek the bit. He must contact the bit himself from his hind legs, raising the back, pushing the neck down. It's got to come in this circle. And then we had um, a wonderful girl come and ride today. And um, it's going to be an exciting announcement soon because she's a fabulous rider and does young horses and she is wonderful. And I don't know if I can like say anything yet because I don't want to like let the cat out of the bag too early. But she came and rode for us and did like a little riding interview and wanted to see the place and see if we all like connected. And of course, um, I had taught her years ago in Pennsylvania and she's, I already was a fan. The girl's a great girl. And now she's trained with Buck Branneman and like all these great people. And so we put her on one of our young horses today. And there was a situation where he was like afraid of, he's kind of new here. So he's a little afraid of his um, reflection in the mirror. And so then he kind of like, Ugh, you know, gets a little spooky and wants to like, oh, tense up. And again, it was interesting because you watch this horse's reaction and she has such terrific feel. She actually could reiterate it to me because I saw it and then she kind of shared her insight on it, which was, I thought, extremely cool because a lot of people don't know that because he spooked and at first she tried to like half halt uh, and just kind of like bring him back in connection and then he like got kind of scared of that. And so for me, that was a right away, I saw history on that horse and she felt it right away. And then she actually said to me, yeah, I actually tried to half halt there after he kind of like got a little bit nervous and he got nervous from my half halt. And I said, yeah, I, that's interesting because again, horses are claustrophobic from too short of rain. Like imagine if you, if someone was riding you and they like had their reins tight and they were like compressing your spinal cord in your cervical vertebrae, like you would want to like escape that, you know, and horses are so amazing. They actually allow us to wreck their gates because we take too much contact and all of a sudden they get like the goose stepping, you know, in the walk or it's lateral, and it starts to like pace and get weird. Um, the canter gets funky in the rhythm. Like there are so many times that we are actually like, like negatively affecting the function of their limbs by this pressure in our hands. And we must let go of the reins. <laughs> and so... It was it was awesome because she's uh, this girl's ridden with Buck, Ban Buck Branneman who's like give he won't if he if he's not trying to escape you um, if he's not trying to escape you he that, that's so often like the horse spooks and we react 
And then this horse in particular, it was clear, like he got like startled and then, then he got actually double scared of the rider's reaction he thought she was going to do, which of course she didn't because then she went past again and gave the reins at the trot. She gave the reins again at the trot. She went into canter, went past the same spot, gave the reins and the horse did not run. Why? Because she didn't have her short reins winning gold medals. She had long reins developing confidence and proper connection and relaxation and trust. I mean, that is what it's all about, people. And 10 years later, by all means, shorten your reins at the Olympics and ride the horse up to the contact. But we don't start there. So that brings me in (laughs) to another concept I need to talk about. Because this whole concept is, I mean, Charles has been talking about this, I mean, I don't know how long, 50 years, you know, his teachers taught him this, he gave it to me, now y'all are here on my, on my Facebook page and in, in the academy and we're all talking about this stuff and it's amazing because it just works doesn't matter if you're training with Buck Brandman or Charles DeComfy or me or whatever. I mean, Allie Brock and I talk about all the time for Michael Barrison. He's got to be on the bit, but off your hand. And yes, sometimes long reins are too long and our aids get too slow. And the little aid we want, like that, like short reins helps you be precise Walter Zettel told me that. He was an amazing classical guru and a wonderful, terrific man, and I loved him very much. And he would also say, shorten your reins. And that's important. But it's also, again, that importance to be able to be light, to put the horse on the bit, but off your hand. But that brings us into this uh, concept of Hegel's dialectics. So Charles lectures about this, and um, I'm sure we will share some of this at some point in the academy for sure, or if we get him back again in the fall, I know he's going to want to do more lectures because he was a little disappointed he didn't get to have the stage. But anyway, Hegel's dialectics is the idea, and I talk about this in one of my lectures in the academy as well. You've got your thesis. What is happening? Then you have your antithesis, which is the opposing idea of what do I want. And in the middle is your synthesis of how do I get there. So I would like to ride and look exactly like Charlotte in the saddle. That's my antithesis because who am I right now? Well, right now I'm a little bouncing I'm a little loose, uh, my legs aren't still, and my, I have like a little hula hoop going on. So I'm a little bit of um, a loose rider. That's, that's what's happening right now. What do I want to be? I want to look like Charlotte. How do I get there? It is not by riding with a stiff back and a tight, short rein arm that will lead you to look like Charlotte. What will give you a seat like Charlotte is to actually go on the lunge line, take away your reins, take away your stirrups, for sure take your spurs off, and have someone lunge you with the horse and sideways so that he's round with his back up because that's important. But then you go in every different position than the ideal end, right? So your means are different than the end, which doing your arm circles and your leg circles and leaning way behind the vertical and doing your little sit-ups in the, in the sitting trot, that's what's going to get you to be able to look like Charlotte in the saddle. It is not practicing exactly what Charlotte is doing, okay? So that's the same thing about 
stretching the horse down. What do, what do, what do I have right now? Well, I have a nice five-year-old horse. What do I want? I want a beautiful Grand Prix horse with his pole up and my reins short. And I want someone to tell me right before I go into the Olympic ring to shorten my reins. That's what I want. So what is my synthesis? What am I to do? How do I get there? Do I shorten the reins on my five-year-old and tell him, well, you better get your head up here because we got to ride you with short reins or we're never going to win a medal. Rah. You know, and he's like, okay. You know, and then he's like, I'm on the bit, but my back is down. And now I'm like hitting the ground with stiff joints, which will eventually make me go lame and we will never get to the Olympics. So you can shorten your reins. Right? So it's about what do we do with the five-year-old? We stretch them down. It's like an accordion. It's not that we don't shorten the reins, but we don't only ride them with that ideal thing, you know, in mind. We have to develop his whole entire body. We have to do the opposite of what he wants, right? So if he wants to run around with his head down and long, well, we do have to shorten the reins and get him going forward and quicker, you know, to the, to the uh, hind legs. But it's really important to, to remember we must do the whole entire limit, not just one way, you know, and, and riding, this is all a little bit uh, misinterpreted a little bit with, you know, I've got to shorten my reins and ride the horse up to the contact onto the outside rein. It's like, well, first off, he should be elastic into both reins and he should be able to stretch all the way down and go all the way up. And be light enough that you could actually ride with both hands, both reins in one hand. Because we can't forget that this was at one point a military sport. And I mean, you know, long, long hundreds of years ago, people were in their, you know, uh, the knights were in their armor, right? So if we had to be like, hold on, I can't grab my sword. Because I, like, can't let go of my short reins because this horse is running. So, you know, you've got to create this elasticity in the connection, lightness in the connection, because we've got to get the horse on our body. Eula would always say, Jessica, more body riding. (laughs) And at the time I was like, okay. I mean, I guess that means my seat or my core or maybe my back, you know, and he would always like, um, on his ribs, he'd always be like, oh, he'd always hit his, hit his like belly and ribs, more body riding. And like now I know exactly what he means by that because I have that now in my seat. Um, but it's, it's really, it's amazing that we must help our horses have an elastic connection. I mean, look at Isabel Worth. I mean, hello. She brings all kinds of different shapes, sizes, sexes, breeds. She brings them all to the Grand Prix. And the first person I ever saw stretch a horse down in a canter pirouette was her. She's amazing. She, I mean, I love Charlotte too. Like, she's amazing. But Isabel is like my hero. Because she gets the horses super loose, totally collected, light in the contact. Uh, it, it's amazing. And I will have to quote my friend Michael Kumka, and I'm going to get him on here. I'm going to get him on here. We're going to get a podcast with Michael soon. Um, because he would always say, and it just drove him nuts, because he would be like, everyone always says, if I put the horse down and stretch it down, I'll never be able to bring it back up, so I shouldn't do that. And it's just like totally not the truth. That's like so not true. The more you like stretch the horse, strengthen the body, um, teach the back how to come up, the better they come up. And it's not that we don't ride all levels, right? It's like we do need to ride the horse, pull up, hind legs to the bit, transitions, forward, back, all that. But then also give it a moment to, you know, release. You guys also see it when Richard is long lining. He's just finishing up his Maryland tour and 
He sends the horse sideways. He um, aligns them, makes them connect properly. And then what does he do? Lengthen the reins. He stretches them down because we've got to be able to ride the horse on any length rein we want. Because if you're on these short reins and you go to give and the horse does not keep gait, it does not keep its frame, he's too reliant on your hand. And the weight sometimes you are feeling in your hand is the weight that is not in the hind legs. You want to feel lightness and elasticity into the connection because you want the hocks to be elastic and um, coiling and using their joints behind the saddle because that's actually what creates um, the ability for the horse to feel really uphill in front of you is because what was behind you went lower to the ground. The hind joints coiled like a little spring. Everything. When I first watch a horse at a clinic, um, I look at what's behind the saddle pad. I, like whatever's going on in the neck or whatever, um, I notice. But like where I start staring is right behind the saddle pad. How does the tail, what does the tail tell me about how soft the joints are landing on the ground? Is the tail swinging? Is the tail hanging out of the buttocks normally? What's happening in the low back, right behind that saddle pad? Is that up? You know, is it, is the pelvis starting to come under? Um, and then, like, how does that translate forward to the the wither? Can we get that neck down to raise that back? So, that was... Oh, okay, just one, one more tiny little thing about this. <laughs> so, too much contact creates like braces on the horse's joints. So like the gymnastic team, the gymnastic Olympic team was just picked. So we all watch these like amazing little athletes tumbling and twirling and do all these things on the, on the, on the floor. And it's just like, wow. I mean, I know that there's a little spring to that mat, but those girls are like getting some airtime. Like that's amazing what they're doing. So imagine if we put two knee braces on their, their knees and we're like, mm, so now your knee can only bend this far. So now can you go to your athletic prowess with this like brace on your knee? No, they can't. That is what too much contact on the horse's face creates braces on the joints. <laughs> and we must free the horse's joints so he can move the most beautiful he can. And it is our job to make the horse more beautiful with us up there than they are by themselves, which is a really hard task because horses are pretty amazing. So anyway... <laughs> Cheers to all of you listening tonight and keep your horse on the bit, but off your hand and ask yourself, what would happen if I lengthened my reins a little bit? So I can't wait to hear how that all goes. Thank you guys for listening. I will see you again soon and make it a great night. Thank you guys. Bye.